Hey guys, it's Emily, and today I'm doing the mid-year book freakout tag. So I am so excited to bring you this tag today because it is one of my favorite here on booktube, and it is that time of the year again. I love how this tag allows me to catch you guys up on everything that's been going on in terms of reading for me this year, and I'll be honest, 2021 hasn't been the greatest for me, especially in terms of reading. I feel like I haven't really read as many books or as many good books as I would have liked by this point in the year. So far I've read a grand total of 63 books, which is not bad by any means. It's just that it is not as great as it could be considering the fact that my reading challenge on Goodreads is to read 150 books. So far I'm super behind. I think I'm like six books behind schedule. So things are not going that well. I've hit multiple reading slumps in the year. And as I said, I feel like my reading has been kind of lacking in terms of like greatness this year. But Without further ado, let's dive into the questions. So question number one is the best book that you've read so far this year. And for me, without a doubt, it has to be Lovely War by Julie Berry. I read this book back in January and oh my God, this was a masterpiece. I dove into it not really knowing what it was about. Like I knew that it was about a love story or actually multiple love stories that are told from the perspectives of the Greek gods. And I think that's all you should know diving into it. If that concept does not really enthrall you, nothing will because honestly the concept is by far one of the most imaginative that I've ever read. I loved reading these love stories from the perspective of the Greek gods. I feel like it added so much more to the story itself. It takes place during World War I which is also something that I found to be super interesting because I feel like most historical fiction that I've read takes place during World War II. I loved how this story was told from multiple point of views because that allowed us to see a different perspective on the war. Not only did we see like the soldiers and like everyone fighting during the war, we also got to see people outside of it, like the women that entertained the soldiers, for example. We got to see like black and white soldiers and their differences between the two of them. Overall, I just really loved this. It was so well written. I find it hard to believe that it's a young adult book. For me, it read like literary fiction. It was incredible. I just cannot believe that it took me this long to read this. It was absolutely amazing and it is by far the best book that I've read so far this year. Question number two is the best sequel that you've read so far this year and for this I have a couple. The first one is is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. You knew it had to be on this list. I mean, this volume was absolutely amazing. I feel like this series evolves and gets better with each volume. This one is by far the one that in terms of content impressed me the most because we really dive deeper into mental health issues. And I loved how Alice Oseman not only talked about mental health from the perspective of someone who is suffering from mental health issues, but also from the perspective of someone who is trying to help and just doesn't know how to. I just love this volume. It was amazing and I cannot believe that the next one is going to be the last volume. I am super sad and I cannot wait to see what Alice Oseman has in store next for Nick and Charlie. Another amazing sequel that I read this year is Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend. Once again, I feel like you knew this was coming if you've been watching my recent vlogs, but I read this recently and once again, Jessica Townsend has done it. It was so amazing. Like each installment just gets better and better and I just love how this world is expanding. I love the themes that were explored in this one. If you guys haven't checked out this series yet, what are you waiting for? This was amazing and I cannot wait to read the next book once again. And my third answer is actually kind of cheating because this book is not a direct sequel but it's a companion novel but since it is part of a series I think it's fair to include it and that is Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. Talia Hibbert is a queen that can do no wrong and this book is no different. It is by far my favorite one in the Brown Sisters trilogy. I loved Eve, I loved Jacob, I just loved their relationship and it was amazing. Hella smutty, hella steamy and it was just so good. Like I can't believe that I am done with the series. It was amazing and I just want to reread it all over again because it was that good. If you guys haven't checked out the Brown Sisters trilogy yet, you definitely should. It is so good and it introduced me to the amazing author that is Talia Hibbert and I will never go back. There are probably a lot more that I could have included. Like this year I've been doing so well in terms of series and I hope I will continue to do that because it is one of my goals for 2021 to finish more of the series that I've already started but these three were probably my favorite ones that I've read so far this year even though I know there are probably more that I could have included on this list. Question number three is a new release that you haven't read yet but are really excited to. Once again I'm cheating and I have a couple of answers for this because I'm kind of behind on anticipated releases and all of that. I have been doing great with catching up and like staying up to date but I'm still kind of behind. So here are a couple of my most anticipated releases that I haven't really gotten the chance to get to yet. So we have a Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is Taylor Jenkins 
Jenkins Reid's most recent release and I am super excited to get to this one. It takes place over the course of 24 hours. It follows the children from some of the characters in The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which is one of my favorite books of all time and I'm super excited to get to this. I have seen quite mixed reviews for this one. I've seen like three and four out of five stars. I was expecting a lot of five out of five but apparently not everyone loves this as much as they wanted to so I am quite curious to see where I'm going to fall on when it comes to this but I am super excited to get to it. Then I have Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Matson. Once again, super excited to get to it. I haven't read one of her books in ages. I feel like it's been a while since she's released something new. So I'm really excited to get to this one. It takes place in New York City, as you can tell by the beautiful cover. And I'm excited. Like, I love Morgan Matson. She's one of my auto buy authors. So I'm excited to get to this one. I cannot believe that I haven't read it yet because it was one of my most anticipated releases of the year. Then I also want to read The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. I follow the author on Instagram. And ever since this book was released, like, I've seen it everywhere. I've heard nothing but incredible things about this one. It's an enemies to lovers and a fake dating type of story. I don't know. I'm just very excited to get to it. I need to get my hands on a copy. And finally, I also want to read Ace of Spades and I don't know too much about the plot of this. I just know that it's queer, black, dark academia and that's all I know. That's all I need to know. I'm very excited to get to it. I've heard nothing but incredible things about this book. I just really want to get to it as soon as possible. The next question is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. There's not a lot of new releases that are like coming up that I'm excited about. Like I don't really know what else is coming out in the second half of the year but there are a couple of titles that I'm quite looking forward to. First there's If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. It's a Cinderella retelling and it features a plus size main character. I also think it's Disney's first adult published romance which I am very excited about and I think it's the first in a new series so even more excited for that. There's also The Heart Principle by Helen Wong that's coming out in August and this one I've heard mixed reviews about but I'm still very much excited because it features Quan, one of my favorite characters in the Kiss Quotient series. And finally in October there's Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Kuzniar. This is a nutcracker retelling. I don't know. I follow the author on Instagram and I'm in love with this cover. I also really love the Nutcracker. I'm a sucker for the Nutcracker. I just love retellings of the Nutcracker and it's the perfect like winter like Christmas time type of story for me so I'm very much looking forward to reading that one. Question number five is your biggest disappointment so far this year. I feel like I've had a very meh year like very average but there aren't a lot of books that like have truly disappointed me. There's a couple that I can think of but there's nothing that I had super high expectations for and that ended up like being a one or two star read. The one that I thought of for this question is Love and Other Trainwrecks by Leah Conan. So this is not one that I dove into with very high expectations but it's still something that let me down because it had all of the ingredients to be something that I would enjoy but unfortunately it ended up disappointing me. Basically it follows our two main characters who are traveling by train in the middle of a snowstorm and the train gets stuck in the middle of nowhere and the two main characters decide to take their journey into their own ends and they will travel by foot and try to get to their destination. I tend to love books that are set on trains and so I have an episode where I read this one if you want more thoughts on this book but overall I just thought that it was kind of a disappointing story. I didn't really vibe with the characters and I think that's where it missed its mark for me because I really wanted to love this but the story like the concept is fine. The execution was decent but the characters really made me struggle and I couldn't connect with anyone. Since it is a YA contemporary like the characters are a big part of it for me and I don't know I just didn't really like this. Like I said go check out the books around the world episode that I did for this one if you want to see more thoughts but it was fine like I'm going to unhaul it. It was a two out of five stars. I just didn't love this. Question number six is your biggest surprise or a book that you weren't expecting to love? I actually have two answers for this one. The first one being One by One by Ruth Ware. This is a mystery thriller and I think that's where this was a surprise for me because I typically don't really read mystery thrillers. I tend not to enjoy them. This one is a closed circle mystery. So this follows a group of characters who travel to the Swiss Alps on a work retreat and during their vacation an avalanche occurs and people start dying one by one. I didn't expect to love this as much as I did. I love closed circle mysteries but like I said before mystery thrillers tend to be a hit or miss for me and I had never read anything by Ruth Ware and a lot of people who love mystery thrillers said that they didn't love this one as much as they thought they would or that they expected to because Ruth Rare is a very beloved author in the mystery thriller community and this one seemed to disappoint 
disappoint a couple of people. However, me not knowing anything about this author, I dove into it like very blind, like I didn't know much about the plot aside from the fact that it was a closed circle mystery and I really loved it. Like I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. I couldn't put this down. Like I read this in less than 24 hours and I just loved it. Like I loved the creepy aspect of it as well. It was like so good. I was not expecting it to take this route and it was just amazing. I loved it. It was a five out of five stars. I couldn't put this down and I cannot recommend it enough. Another book that really surprised me is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. So I started reading this at the beginning of the year. It was a gift and it's not something that I would have picked up on my own but I had heard people talk about it but I just was not really interested in the book when I first picked it up but since it was a gift I thought I would give it a try and I really struggled through like the first 50 pages of the book. I just couldn't get into it. I didn't understand the hype. I was thinking of DNFing it and recently I decided to pick it back up and give it a second chance and wow this blew me away. It was so good. I loved the writing. Frederick Bachman knows how to put emotions into words. I really connected with the characters as well even though they weren't my favorite. Like I didn't feel for anyone. Like I didn't connect that closely to anyone but I really understood what they were going through and I think they were really well-rounded and complex and flawed and yeah overall really enjoyed it. Like I'm surprised by how much I loved it. Yeah, another big surprise for this year. Question number seven is a favorite new author or new to you author. I'll be honest, for me, in order to be able to say like an author is a new favorite of mine, I have to have read more than one of their books and ideally books that are like not part of a series. So like if it's one series that I've read, I cannot really say that the author is a new favorite of mine. Like I have to have read multiple of their works. This year I don't really have anyone that falls under that category, but there is one that I am quite looking forward to reading more of their work because a book of theirs that I read really surprised me and that is Bridget Kimmerer who wrote A Curse of So Dark and Lonely. So I read the first two books in that trilogy and both of them were very different. I wasn't expecting to love this one that much. Like I thought it was going to be a very average YA fantasy but it ended up being so much more and I just fell in love with the way Bridget Kimmerer writes. I think she's able to make characters feel very three-dimensional and real and she knows how to pace a story to keep you interested and so that's why I'm considering her to be like one of my new favorite authors. Like I really want to check out more of her work. I am quite looking forward to finishing the series this year as well. Question number eight is new fictional crush and to be honest like I don't really have any new fictional crushes. Like I don't rush on characters easily. I think I used to when I was a kid or when I was like a teenager but now I don't really do that anymore. Like I feel like I'm more detached from the characters and there's not one that really stood out to me this year so far. Question number nine is new favorite character and once again that's a hard question for me to answer but one that came to mind is Eve Brown from actor age Eve Brown and I guess Jacob could also be like one new fictional crush that I have because I did really love his characters. I just loved how real Eve felt to me. I related to her so much even though we're really different and we come from different backgrounds. I related to her story and her struggles quite a bit and I just I really loved her and I think we need more people like Eve Brown in the world. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. I'll be honest I don't really have an answer for that one. I'm not someone who cries easily when reading books and so far this year there's not one that comes to mind like I haven't cried once reading a book even though like I've read a couple of sadder books or books that I thought I would cry while reading. I haven't really reached that point with any book so maybe I'm a heartless bitch but there's nothing that really made me super sad or like made me want to cry so no answer to that question. Question number 11 is a book that made you happy and the first one that came to mind for me is Shipped by Angie Ackman. So this is a new romance release and I I fell in love with this. It was so funny. It made me laugh out loud several times and it just put a smile on my face. I had the best time reading this. I read this in less than 24 hours once again. This is pitched as the hating game meets the Honeymooners and I honestly have no better way to describe this book. I think it's the perfect description. It's basically about our two main characters who are at war with one another and they are sent on this cruise. They both work for a travel agency and so they are sent on this cruise in order to get this promotion and the one of them that will come out with the best best pitch will win the new position I guess like will be promoted. It was just amazing. They fall in love. Super cute. Super fun. It was great. I loved it and I absolutely recommend it. Question number 12 is the most beautiful book that you've bought or received so far this year. I have a couple that I could have chosen for that question but one of my favorite covers that I bought this year is A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. I mean look at this. This is so beautiful. That entire series has such amazing covers and the story is just as good. It follows these three sisters who are cursed and they cannot leave the island that they were born on but in the first book they go through an adventure that kind of changes things for them and in the sequel it's a lot of fun. I loved it as well. One of my favorite sequels I've read so far this year. I should have included it in the question earlier on but it was amazing. 
five out of five stars. I loved the story. It had pirates. It had adventure. It had everything that I could want in a sequel and I just really loved it. So I would totally recommend this series as well if you haven't checked it out yet. Question 13 is the books that you need to read by the end of the year. Now I have quite the list and uh, I have so many books that I want to read by the end of the year. There's just so many books and so little time but here are some of my top priorities for the end of the year first i have queen of air and darkness by cassandra clare <sighs> can't believe that i haven't read it yet like i bought it two years ago and i still haven't read it but i think i'm going to be able to read it like in the second half of the year because i am currently um finishing up ghost of the shadow market so i think next i'm going to be able to pick this one up but yeah it just needs to happen already then i have arch enemies by marissa meyer this is a sequel to the renegade series and i just yeah, I need to read it. Um, it's one of the series that I want to finish by the end of the year, so I am excited to get to it. Then I have A Reaper at the Gates by Sabato here. I also need to read A Sky Beyond the Storm, which is the fourth book in the series and the final one. I just need to finish a series already. I was waiting for the fourth book to come out to read this one, but now I have no excuse because the fourth book is out. There's also The Tyrant's Tomb by Rick Riordan that I need to read. I talked about this book quite frequently on my channel recently, and I apologize. I just really need to finish this one because I've been reading this since August of 2020. So I think we need to mark this as read. I would also love to read A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer, which is the third and final book in the Cursebreaker series. There's also The Goal by Elle Kennedy that I need to read because I need to finish that series already. There's also A Tangle of Spells by Michelle Harrison, which is the third book in the Pinch of Magic series. I think this is what it's called. I also need to finish a Twisted Tell series. You guys know that. There's just a lot of books on my TV hard for the end of the year, so hopefully we'll be able to read them all. So that's it. We have answered all of the questions. This was so much fun to do once again. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!